Hey everyone, Donut here. We're going to talk about a video today, an old video today. One of my favorite things that I've been watching lately on YouTube, besides from bad recorder videos, has got to be old police training videos from like the 60s and 70s and 80s. They're so hilariously bad and over the top. It's like watching an old grindhouse flick with the fake blood, the cheesy narrator. He had the wrong weapon with him. None of the audio syncs up whatsoever. <laughs> It's just pure gold, and I can't help but to make a video about one I came across today. It reminds me so much of watching my first Dirty Harry movie, where people get shot and they grab their wound and they slowly fall over, you know, or they jump hilariously through the air when they take one round from a 38. It's the best. Today we're going to be taking a look at a 1976 film from the Sid Davis Training Program. You remember the old videos that people make fun of all the time? The old marijuana videos where smoking the devil's lettuce will make you kill your family, put a finger in your dog's butt, turn gay, and then burn your school down. Well, that's the kind of videos that Sid Davis is famous for. He made a lot of videos like that, but every once in a while he'd make a video for the military or police. Videos where people die in a hilarious fashion, and it's trippy as hell because it was the 70s and everyone was doing drugs. I'm pretty sure Sid Davis was even doing drugs. One of his more famous films that he made, and I quote, the YouTube, this is a quote. I, I am not saying this personally. One of his most famous videos, though, and YouTube, again, quote, this is a quote, warns about a dangerous and contagious disease known as homosexuality. You see, Ralph was a homosexual. We start off with the antagonist to the film, who I'm just going to refer to as Dirk Diggler for no specific reason other than it's the 70s, robbing the local jewelry haberdashery. Fearing for his life, Mr. Cumberbatch, who I have named so for looking very dapper, steps on a lump in the floor which causes a brick to slide down the crime rail into dispatch. Why, yes, back in the 70s, Rube Goldberg devices were used to alert dispatch a crime was occurring. The information from the crime brick is relayed back to officer unit number 18, I believe, who responds code 1 to a burglary in progress. 630 East Colorado, 630 East Colorado, Gold Jewelers. We're going to go ahead and mute this little part with the dispatchers talking right here because the 70s were a different time and uh, the way they gave out subject descriptions back then probably wouldn't fly these days. US 20. But after hearing a little 1970s racial insensitivity, we get the title for this amazing piece of film. Shotgun or sidearm! Officer Nostash here, not sure what his f***ing problem is. It's the 70s and he's a cop and he doesn't have a mustache. Loser. Loser! Officer Nostash runs right into Dirk Diggler as he's running out of the store. Dirk Diggler fires one shot. Officer Nostash eviscerates him with a well-placed shotgun blast. Ari Thought. Freeze! Four seconds after the first shot is fired, people realize that shots were fired. And now they realize they should probably get out of the way. Ah! Look out! Oh no! Hey! Man, that Steven has a really high-pitched voice. Oh no! Oh no! But it turns out that Officer Nostash, having probably fought in the Vietnam War and touched the shotgun before, doesn't realize how shotguns work. Look! That guy's part of the shot! Out. How did I miss the baby? <laughs> Listen here, YouTube manual reviewer. I know you got your little finger just hovering over that no ad button, but believe it or not, I hate to break it to you, this is fake blood. You can't help but to not love how the sound just doesn't sync up in old shit like this. And I don't know what weird shit Catherine Boker is into, but she's definitely smiling right there. Steven Goldberg, 42, truck driver, shot in the left shoulder. Rosemary Fenner, 37, secretary, shot in the left knee. Ah, good thing the medics are on scene quick, though, with the old wave the telephone over the buckshot wound in the knee trick. Shot on the left knee. Catherine Bokar, 29, part-time teacher. Forehead grazed. 
That's right. You hit Steven Goldberg, Rosemary Fenner, and Catherine Boker, you stupid f***. This would have never happened had you have grown a mustache prior to this incident. Collateral damage having no mustache wearing ass. Most cops get a fair amount of practice with their sidearms. Oh, trigger discipline wasn't a thing back then, by the way. Unless they're hunters. They don't know much about what happens after they pull the trigger. Wait, they don't know what happens after they pull the trigger? You guys didn't tell them back then? <laughs> Here's your shotgun. Can't w wait for you to figure out what it does out on the streets, you know, to Stephen, Catherine, and Rosemary, and probably a baby. The best way to learn about this here shotgun is through experience. <laughs> Welcome to your first day as a police officer. There's a shotgun in the car. Well, sir, what's it do? Don't worry about it. <laughs> With his 38, Don would have hit only the suspect. One shot. Block. Holy shit, they practiced one shot through the suspect block back in the 70s. You've got a lot of bullets going for you instead of just one. And a shotgun doesn't have to be aimed carefully. Accuracy by volume, guys. You can whirl, <laughs> fire, and blow the guy away. Whirl around and blow the guy away. <laughs> just f*** his shit up. Not one officer in ten has a clear idea of how bullets ricochet. Not one in ten have a clear idea of how bullets ricochet? I mean, I know you guys think that a uh, crime brick going down the old metal slide to dispatch is the best way to relay things that are going to go to officers, but you got to know what a ricochet is. Virtually no one knows what a ricochet is. 1976, and I'm guessing that a shit ton of non-vets are cops, and they didn't know what a ricochet was. Not one in ten. This applies both to your 38 and to shotgun pellets. Oh shit, they did have triggered this one. The bullet or a group of pellets tend to follow pretty close to the surface they hit. Real talk, though, that's a pretty decent lesson and, and demonstration for those of you that didn't know that. That's why in a gunfight or going into a tactical situation, you don't lean against brick walls or hard walls like that. Bullets will travel right down them. Finally, someone with a mustache. Christ almighty. Watch out, though. It's a briefcase, man, with that mother briefcase again. Chase him down with your shotgun. Do it. Please. In a deserted alley, a shotgun might have seemed like the perfect weapon. Probably because no officers are aware of what ricochets are, and they're stupid f***ing kids on skateboards all over the place. But it's the middle of the afternoon. And no one can guarantee that the alley is going to stay deserted. All right, these little turds obviously have a death wish, so I really don't care if they end up like Stephen, Catherine, or Rosemary at this point. They stop right in the line of fire. They see the dreaded briefcase man do a full sprint past them, followed by an officer with a Mossberg in his hands. And what do they do? They follow him. At this point, you are no longer collateral damage. You're, you're a product of Darwinism. What's the matter? Can't you climb the fence? Oh my God, slap the shit out of that kid. Judging from the look that the officer turns around and gives that kid, he's tired of these motherfucking kids on these motherfucking skateboards. I wish they would have played four more seconds of it so we could have actually seen him butt stroke that kid. Twelve thirty, I like a twenty-eight and a twenty-nine on Nora William Frank nine seven seven. Twelve thirty, ten four. That traffic stop call-in is not legitimate. He didn't use the crime brick. Fake news. Fake cop. No mustache. I wish I could finish the final gunfight, but the video is so damn awful, I can't figure out what the hell is going on. You can fire a shotgun fast, pointing instead of aiming it. But there's one last piece of good advice in this video. And at close range, you can blast the hell out of almost anything. Hands on your head, come off slow. Oh, well, look who it is, Mr. Collateral Damage No Stash himself. I mean, his command obviously doesn't give a shit about the citizens of Pasadena putting a shotgun in that monster's hands again. Look out! Oh, no! <laughs> After what happened that sunny afternoon in the jewelry store between him and, and Stephen, poor Rosemary, 
poor Elizabeth. Oh, wait, Cat Catherine. He probably did shoot someone named Elizabeth, too. The baby's name was probably Elizabeth. At least it ended on a good note. I was expecting the officer to hit at least three babies with his negligence that time. And that's all I have for you amazing people today. I hope you enjoyed my breakdown of the 1976 classic film, uh, Pistol or shotgun? No, shot. Oh, shotgun or sidearm? Shotgun or sidearm? Oh yeah. What did we learn from this video? Ricochets were were an old wives' tale to cops in the 1970s. Beware of the briefcase, man. And First Amendment auditors are still big annoying losers, and no one likes them but their mother. Well, that's it. Shameless plug time. I got a second channel, twitchtv operator. I stream on there almost every single weeknight. Pretty late, but we have a good time. I have a Patreon. I have a merch store. Donutoperator.com. I spit on the screen. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. Have a fantastic day.